Hey guys, in this video I am going to discuss with you process state transition diagram. So mainly uh, at everywhere you will find that five uh, state transition diagram, new, ready, running, waiting and then terminated. Okay. We will discuss two more state here okay. and we will also discuss the different types of scheduler. So the very first state is new. If a process is a new state, it does not mean that it has been created. Fine. We cannot say it is a process, we can say it is a program which is in secondary memory uh, will be picked by operating system and uh, it will be put into the main memory. So process here you can say a process is about to create, it is it has not been created yet, fine. Now next state is after the creation of the process, it go to ready state. Here you can say the process has been, after the creation of the process, the process go to ready state. Right? It means that process is now ready to run. Okay. Now after ready state, where it will go? It will go to running state. Right? And this, this phenomena is known as schedule. This, pro, this, uh, this process has been scheduled and that process goes to running state or you can say this is dispatch. Now after running state, where it can go? See if everything goes smoothly, then after running, if suppose running means to that process CPU has been allocated and if the process has been completed, then the process will go to terminate state. Here the process has been completed, then it will go to this state terminated. Now one more state is there. So uh, if someone asks the what are the minimum number of processes, uh, minimum number of states a process can go through. So you can say four, new, ready, running and terminate. Now suppose at some point of time process is running, now process is in CPU and process wants some IO devices, some uh, you, uh, process wants to perform some IO operations. Then process will go to which state? To waiting state or somewhere it is also written as blocked state. Fine. Means IO request. Here is IO request and after the completion of the IO operation, the back to ready state. Here you can write IO completion. Fine. So this is the basic five state model of any process. Almost in every operating system, uh, this diagram would be there and the process would go to these five states. Now, see this diagram is basically, you know, for non preemption you can say non preemption means see i have told you in multi programming that you cannot forcefully remove a process from the cpu here is the same case you cannot remove if process is running then process if process wants any io device then it can go to waiting or process can go to only the terminated state so this is what the non preemption you cannot forcefully remove a process from cpu now we also have that multitasking we have allocated some time quantum to each process and if time quantum completes then the process would again the process would be removed forcefully or you can say preempted from the CPU and again go to the ready queue something like this. We can show one more transition like this from running to ready. So this is for preemption. This is showing the preemption of the process and if you do not write, you should not draw this one then that is known as non preemption. When the process will go from running to ready state, maybe uh, some time quantum expires then or second thing may be because of priority. If any another process which is having higher priority than uh, which is having higher priority than a process which is running. Then what operating system will do? Operating system will remove that running process from the CPU 
and the CPU would be allocated to that process having higher priority. So, this is the preemption case. Next two states are also there. See, one is suspend ready. Now, when a process will go to this state, a process from ready state would go to this state. This is known as suspend and when process resumes, then again go back to ready state. And why, why the requirement of this state? See, all the processes, this ready queue here, here in this state, many processes can be there in ready queue, P1, P2, P3, P4 like this, fine. Now, see, this, this, all the processes which are in ready queue, those processes are in main memory, fine. Here also main memory, the processes are in main memory and if process is in waiting or blocks, then also process is in memory, main memory, sorry, fine. And as you all know, the size of main memory is limited. So, we cannot put many or all the processes at the same time into main memory, fine. And because of some reason, maybe one higher priority process is there and that process has to come to ready state and but there is no more space for any other process. Then what operating system will do, what the scheduler will do, we'll discuss scheduler later, okay. What the operating system will do, operating system will pick that process that having low priority from this uh, ready queue, suspend that process and then that process will be moved or you can say swap out, swapped out from main, mem main memory to, to secondary memory. And then that state is known, known as suspend ready. And maybe after some time when that process, when there is enough space in uh, this ready queue in main memory, then that process can be resumed back to this ready state. Next, uh, one more state is what? That is suspend wait or suspend blocked you can say. Now, when a process will go to this state, see this process is in waiting state because that process is uh, performing some IO operations, fine. And if more and more processes are there, more and more processes are performing IO operations, see this is also the process which, in, is, which is in waiting state that is also in main memory and main memory size of main memory is limited, okay. If more and more processes are running, uh, more and more processes are coming from this running state to this waiting state then at one time this memory would be exhausted, fine. And what the operating system have to do, the operating system have to pick some processes and then swap out those processes to secondary memory. And that state is known as suspend wait, suspended. And after resume, uh, after uh, you know that process, maybe, uh, maybe there is some space available now, then that process can be resumed back to this state, fine. It is not like that if process is in suspend wait state, then that process is not performing IO operation. Still that process is doing its IO operations. And here, here, this transition is what? If that process has completed its IO operations, fine, then that process is ready to go to the ready state, then that process will switch to suspend ready and after the suspend ready, it can resume to ready state. So one question may be why the process which has completed its IO operation can't go back to waiting state, it is going to the suspend ready state. So the answer may be if the process who has completed its IO operation that it is ready to execute and if it is, it is resumed back to this waiting state then it again go to this blocked state, fine. So this is the process state transition diagram. Now, we are going to discuss various types of schedulers. Three types of schedulers are there. One is long term scheduler, one is short term scheduler and one is medium term scheduler. Now, see, from this new state, fine, process would be picked and uh, put in the ready state, fine. So this, this thing is done with the help of long term scheduler. So the long term scheduler pick the processes from new state and then put the processes into ready state. It also decide the degree of multiprogramming. 
Now, what is degree of multiprogramming? It is, you know, you can say the maximum number of processes that can be that can reside in this ready state at one time. If 50 processes can reside in ready state at one at, at some particular time, then you can say the degree of multiprogramming is 50. Fine. So this degree of multiprogramming will be decided by this long term scheduler. Okay. Now, from ready state, uh, that uh, process would be picked and then the CPU would be allocated to that process. And the, this task would be done with the help of short term scheduler. Fine. And somewhere it is also written that which processes to be picked that would be decided by short term scheduler and the short term scheduler will call the dispatcher and the dispatcher will pick the process from this ready state and CPU would be allocated to that process and they put the process into running state. Now, third type of scheduler is that is medium term scheduler. See this suspension from waiting block to the suspend ready and the from ready to this suspend ready. This would, would be done with the help of medium term scheduler. Fine. So, three types of scheduler are there long term, short term and medium term scheduler. Now, one more funda is there. When a process is running, then it takes two times. One is CPU time and one is IO time. When a process is running and executing on a C, uh, on the CPU, then uh, that is known as CPU time. And when a process is uh, doing some IO operation, then that time is known as IO time. If a process is, you know, spending more and more time in the processing or uh, in the CPU, then that process is known as CPU bound. And if a process is spending more and more time doing IO operations, performing IO operation, then that process is known as IO bound process. Fine. Now, which, so you can say two kind of process, CPU bound process and IO bound process. Now, the performance of the system or the CPU also depends on the decision taken by the long term scheduler. See, two types of uh, processes are there, CPU bound and IO bound we have already discussed. And if long term scheduler had, has chosen more and more processes which are IO bound and those are in now in ready state. Now, suppose one process has been allocated to the CPU and then again that process is IO bound that is why that process requires to do some IO operation and that process will go to waiting state. Next process that is running state again that requires some IO process and then it will again go to the waiting state. So, the processes are again and again going to waiting state. So, that is why CPU utilization would be low and you can say that more and more context switching would be there that is also you know some time consuming process. Now, if, if long term scheduler has chosen more and more jobs which are more and more processes which are CPU bound, then although that CPU utilization would be at maximum, but in that case what happens, maybe some processes require some IO uh, operation to perform and if that process is doing IO operation, then maybe that process would face starvation. Fine. Maybe that process would have to wait for a long time to again go back to the CPU because processes are all the processes or more and more processes are CPU bound processes. Okay. So, long term scheduler has to decide, has to you know choose a mix of CPU bound and IO bound processes. Now, let us discuss the frequency of these three schedulers, means how frequently schedulers has been called. The maximum frequency is of short term scheduler, then medium term scheduler and then long term scheduler. Because short term scheduler has been called again and again. See short term scheduler decide which, pro which process is to be uh, chosen from ready state and then is then it call uh, the dispatcher and dispatcher is a software which pick the job and uh, that uh, job is going to from ready state to then running state. Fine. Now, so that decision that which job is going uh, uh, that dispatcher will pick from ready state fine that decision is going to valid for a going to uh, you know remain valid for a short time 
and when that process which is running either that can be terminated or that will go to the waiting state then again short term scheduler has to decide which job is to be picked from this ready state right so very frequently short term scheduler has been called and the decision which that uh, that the short term scheduler takes that decision you know remains valid for a short time that is why it is known as short term scheduler now what about medium term scheduler <laughs> see <coughs> medium term scheduler see the role of medium term scheduler is picks swap out the job from main memory to pick, uh, swap out the process from main memory to secondary memory and vice versa okay that suspends and and thus resume this also suspend and resume this is done uh, with the help of this medium term scheduler so the process which is in suspend wait state it is not like that that process would be in waiting state for a long time or you can say that the process would be in waiting state for a short amount of time fine so that is why it is known as medium term scheduler it is not called so frequently as short term scheduler now what is the long term scheduler is so the long term scheduler decides the degree of multi programming means how many processes can reside uh, at ready state at maximum at particular moment of time fine and that that decision is going to last for a long time that is why it it is being called uh, you know after a long time long term scheduler is not being called very frequently so this is all about the process state transition diagram and three types of schedulers so i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care